What is up guys? We are doing an updated video on what's in my camera bag. Since the last video, pretty much everything has changed. Um, I'm now up to five lenses and two camera bodies, and I think there's only one lens that is left from the last time. My apologies if you guys hear that little kind of chatter in the background, that's my, my puppy running around. Without wasting any time, let's get into it guys. What is still the same? This guy right here. My rusty but trusty, shouldn't even call it rusty, but my A7R2, absolutely love this thing. I touched on this quite a bit in the last video. I'm not gonna go over all the different specs on here because you guys have probably seen a million videos, but absolutely adore this camera. It's wild in the last year how much this has dropped in price. Now I see these going anywhere from like 500 bucks in pretty rough condition up to like a thousand bucks for a pretty low shutter count one. Such an incredible camera for the price. Now, before I have my new camera, I thought this thing in terms of autofocus was great. It is, but the biggest drawback now to having the, the A7R3, which I'll get to in a minute, is that only having five frames per second is pretty tough. Like, I didn't realize that at the time. I was like, oh, it's good enough. But once you jump up to 10 or even higher, you realize that five really might not cut it in a lot of aspects. So in terms of image quality, it has the same sensor as the A7R3. So in terms of just overall images, you're not gonna see much of a difference. The color science is a little bit different, I noticed that. But for the price, guys, I don't know if you can really beat this camera if you're just mainly doing stills, portraits, automotive. Even for rollers, some of my best rollers were taken with this camera. So you can make it happen. If you're in the market and you don't wanna spend a ton of money, highly, highly recommend this guy. Next up, we got my baby right here, the A7R3. Now, I wasn't really looking for this camera, funny enough. It just so it happened that it popped up on Marketplace, and there was a really good deal on one, and I messaged the owner, and it was already sold, and it had my, my gears turned into my head. I'm like, hmm, if I can get one of these for around 1700-ish, which is a really good deal, I'll jump on it. And sure enough, I put it on my Instagram story and someone reached out and they wanted 1650. So it only had, I think 13,000 um, shutter actuations. So pretty darn low considering these are rated to 500,000. So this thing is gonna outlast me probably. But the biggest thing with this one is A, the ergonomics. Huge fan of this little like joystick back here. Ooh, ugly picture of me, or ugly reflection. But, uh. Yeah, this thing is killer for changing the focusing points on the go, whereas on the A7R2, you have to use this little like D-pad style thing and it just takes a lot longer. This is far more accurate and quick. And then also the 10 frames per second. So when I was doing rollers previously, I never used the burst function. I always just single fired. And after switching to this and doing the 10 frames per second, I noticed a pretty big difference in the hit ratios. Um, I definitely get quite a bit more in focus perfectly sharp images. So that alone is worth what I pay for this camera. I thought about selling the R2, but I just love that camera so much and it's never let me down. So I'm keeping that as a spare, but this is my go-to workhorse. I don't know, I've probably already put about 10,000 photos on it. I've only had it a couple of months, but this thing is an absolute beast. If you can swing the extra money, I do recommend it, but the A7R2 is still stout as hell. But this, also for video, that's the other reason I got this. I don't know if I'm gonna get like heavily into video again, um, but if I do, this one has the 1080 at 120 frames per second, whereas the A7R2 only has 60 frames per second. And then this one, they both do 4K, um, but yeah, love, love, love this. My main workhorse cannot go wrong with it whatsoever. A lot of people actually prefer the R3 over the R4. Then we got, I think this is the only lens left from what I had before. This is my Samyang 35 1.4. Now I had a Sigma 35 1.4 for a couple days and honestly, not a fan guys. In back-to-back -back testing, I was testing the sharpness and the autofocusing. This thing focused better and in like, I would say 75 to 80% of the time, it was sharper. And this guy comes in, I think it's like 400 or 450 bucks compared to the Sigma, which I think floats around like the six to 700 ballpark. Now I have seen some things online where people say it's hit or miss. And I've noticed that with Samyang and Rokinon. 
is that it's kind of luck of the draw. You might get a winner or you might get one that's kind of defective out of the box. So I got lucky with this one, incredibly sharp. I'm gonna try to put images up on the screen um, with every lens showing you what I've uh, taken with, photos I've taken with each lens. This thing used to be my number one go-to lens. In many cases, it still can be, but I'll show you my next lens is kind of what took over this one. And I've contemplated selling this one. But at nighttime, a lot of the night shots I take, I just did a really cool one with Ray's WRX. I'll post that up on the screen too. This is the only lens I used and it came in clutch. So I'm gonna keep this one just because, I don't know. It's kind of one of those things where I know I can just trust in it. Also for like gas station shots and stuff, this is killer. It's still wide enough, but that 1.4 just lets in enough light where it is gorgeous. So highly recommend this one if you don't have a big budget for lenses and you don't wanna maybe opt for the Sigma, highly, highly recommend this one. Next up, we have the good old kit lens. I don't remember if I had this in the last video. Now, I used to use this exclusively for rollers. A lot of people didn't know that. 95% of my rolling shots were taken with this lens. And this is just the kit 28 to 70, nothing special, just a polarizer on it. I'd ended up selling my kit lens once I got the Zeiss 16 to 35 F4. Now that was great, but the reason I ended up selling that to my buddy is just because of the fact that F4 at low light, it wasn't great. So I wanted to use something that was better for interior shots. And so an F2.8 made more sense. Um, after selling this, I just felt like something was missing in my bag. Now, have I used this since I bought it a couple months ago? No, but I know it's one of those lenses I could trust no matter what the situation is for rollers. Also, I'm sure it would work for interior shots but I'll show you guys my other lines that I picked up that replaced my Zeiss. But I don't know, this thing I got for like 90 bucks, it's virtually brand new. So it just kind of sits in my bag and collects dust as you guys can probably see in there. But it's good to have, they're so inexpensive. If I'm ever in a pinch, I'll make it work with this lens because it's kind of an all-in-one, it'll do whatever you need. So keep yours or sell it, whatnot, but this guy, it's just good to have. I like knowing I got it in the arsenal. My bread and butter in terms of rolling shots or interior shots, the Tamron 17 to 28 F 2.8. So I was extremely torn when I was getting rid of my Zeiss 16 to 35. I wanted to do the G Master, but that's at like 2,200 bucks. And I could not justify spending that much on a lens that really wouldn't get all that much use. So after doing some research, this one uh, popped up a lot. It's like a recommended lens is a similar replacement. Um, I think it was like Peter Linden. Oh, I'm spacing his name. I forgot whose review it was, but they did the test between the two lenses. And this one was actually sharper compared to the Zeiss. So I decided to go with this one. Love it. It is great. The only thing I wish it had was some in-body stabilization. But for the price of this guy, which I think is around 900 bucks, I, you can't really expect it to have that, especially with the F2.8. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, this thing is tiny. This thing is not that much bigger in terms of size to the kit lens, and yet it's the constant F2.8 all the way from 17 to 28. Now, that is a pretty small uh, focal length or focal range. Um, I always typically shoot at 17. I have noticed at 17, it's maybe a little bit softer but it's damn good and for the price i mean what else is out there i know tamron has a 28 to 75 but 28 just is a little a little wide for my preference for rollers with having 42 megapixels i'd prefer to shoot wide and then be able to crop in but this thing it is very very sharp as long as you hit focus right it's designed well it's held up i've used this one now for probably like five six months got some pretty awesome shots with it um only thing I do miss though is the optical steady shot or the in-body stabilization and the lens, but it does its job. Big fan. Can't really go wrong with it. I've never seen any issues. It's never um, had like horrible chromatic aberrations, nothing like that. So if you're in the market for a rolling shot lens and you have, you know, roughly a thousand bucks to spend, this is a really good alternative to the G Master. But also check out like marketplace and stuff because I've seen these flowing around for like 650, 700 bucks. The good old girthinator. 
So this is my second newest lens. This is the Rokinon, or is it the Samyang? Uh, Rokinon, same thing, they're sister companies. It's just the branding. But this is the 85 f1.4. Previously, I had the Sony f1.8, and I love that lens. For some reason, I just wanted to be that guy and be like, oh, I have an 85 1.4. Now, the difference between this and the Sony in terms of like an f1.8 to an f1.4, it's not really that noticeable, I'll be honest. But this thing, even at 1.4, is sharper than the Sony at 1.8. Now, the first copy I got of this, kind of going back to what I discussed with the 35, my copy would not autofocus. Brand new, out of the box, it would not autofocus to save its life it would literally lock up the motor in the inside and it would just click and make all types of like chattering noises. So I ended up returning that and I got this one since it was refurbished because I figured someone else probably had the same issue and they fixed it. Uh, since I got the refurbished one right here, this thing has been flawless. Honestly, this lens alone makes me want to get into portraits because just the bokeh it produces is nuts. Also, the thing I've noticed about the Samyang and Rokinon is they tend to have a little bit more of like a, a contrasty, maybe slightly warmer tint to the photos, which just adds a lot of character to it. So big fan of that. It's huge. I don't know even how to put this into perspective, but this thing has got to be like four inches wide. It's girthy as hell, but the images it produces for the price. Guys, this thing I think goes for like 550 or 600 bucks brand new. To get refurbished, it's in the low 500s. You could probably even get it into like the high 400s. Such a damn good lens. Also, people have tested it against the G Master, and in most cases, it's actually sharper as well. Granted, it depends on the copy, but holy shit. This is probably the best bang for the buck lens you're going to find if you're cool with that focal length on full frame. On crop sensor, it might be a little bit of a stretch since it has no in-body or no stabilization built into the lens. But with the newer Sonys that have the in-body stabilization, you really don't need it all that much. And with the 1.4, it's letting in tons of damn light. So if I could use this in every situation or for every shoot, I definitely would. Sometimes it's a little bit of a stretch depending on the locations. Like indoors, you're not going to be able to use this much at all. But absolutely adore this lens. The look it gives to photos is next to none. So damn sharp. I cannot stress that enough. It is razor sharp even at 1.4. Last, but definitely not least, my favorite lens, if I could only use one lens for the rest of my life, it's this bad boy right here. The Sigma 50 1.4. Now I know what you're thinking, I just kind of bashed the Sigma 35 1.4 and you're probably thinking this is the same. It's not. I don't know if the Sigma I had had some sort of defective issues. I don't think so because it still worked fine. It's just Compare my Samyang, it didn't seem as sharp. This thing is stupid. And I mean that in the best way possible. I, every time I take a photo with this lens, I can count on it. It hits focus every single time. It is almost, if not as sharp as the 85 1.4. And God, it is just a monster. If you guys can feel the construction of this thing, I feel like if an intruder broke in, they have no fucking shot if I hit them with this. I mean, this has got to be like two pounds. I don't know. But oh my God, the build construction is phenomenal. And it's just the best piece of glass. Um, honestly, I've had the Sony 51.8, just their little nifty 50. It was good. And I always thought it was sharp. But then once you use something like this, you realize that that lens is just, I don't want to say junk because it still gets the job done. But it is a night and day difference. This thing is razor sharp. Um, can you use this for rollers? Probably not. But damn it, I almost want to try just because it's that good. Uh, you can use this indoors. You can use this for everything. Literally just about everything besides rollers. And even then you could probably pull it off. But if you're starting out and you want one lens and you have the budget, this is it. Don't look any further. Don't even look at the 35 Look at this guy right here. I actually got this second hand. Guess how much I paid for this? I think retail, it's like $950. I got this thing for, I think it was $550. Bucks. Very minimal wear, and even then, flawless. So if you guys can pick this up like second hand, do it. It is kind of the one and done lens. Get this, use it. It'll pay for itself. 
the contrast, the sharpness, everything about this lens is absolutely perfection. Also for detail shots, this is my favorite go-to. It's just ridiculous. It, that's the one word I have for this lens, ridiculous. Not go wrong whatsoever with this bad boy. But thank you guys so much and I'll catch you later. Ten toes touch down, that's real talk. I've been really heating up and yeah, I'm still hot. I don't ever get the feels, but she real hot. I might pull up in the whip and let her peel off. Got a skirt for the money, I don't know about you.